Our chapter one maxim is In principio erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. Latin Vulgate. In principio erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. Latin Vulgate. Our chant this week is first conjugation verb amo. Say it with me. Amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Now let's try singing it. Amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Amo, amas, amat, amamus, amatis, amant. Amo, I love, amas, you love, amat. He, she, it loves, amamas, we love, amatis, you all love, amat, they are loving. Amo, amare, amawi, amatum. I love to love, I loved, loved. Amo, amare, amawi, amatum. I love to love, I loved, loved. Do, dare, dedi, datum. I give to give, I gave given. Do, dare, dedi, datum. I give to give, I gave given. Intro, intrare, intrawi, intratum. I enter to enter, I entered, entered. Intro, intrare, intrawi, intratum. I enter to enter, I entered, entered. Laboro, laborare, laborawi, laboratum. I work to work, I worked, worked. Laboro, laborare, laborawi, laboratum. I work to work, I worked, worked. Naro, narare, narawi, naratum. I tell to tell, I told, told. Naro, narare, narawi, naratu. I tell to tell, I told, told. Aqua, aquai, water, water. Aqua, aquai, water, water. Fabula, fabula, story, story. Fabula, fabula, story, story. Porta, porta, gate, gate. Porta, porta, gate. Gate. Silwa, silwai, forest, forest. Silwa, silwai, forest, forest. Terra, terrai, earth, earth. Terra, terrai, earth, earth. Well, hello, and welcome to chapter one. Capitulum unum in Latin. That means chapter one, in case you didn't know. Where we get to start our study of the Latin language, the lingua latina, the Latin language, the Latin lingua, this means tongue, the Latin tongue. And what a great language it is. It's a language that is the basis for so many other languages like the languages of Rome or the Romance languages. Do you know what some of those are? They include Spanish and French, Italian, Portuguese, um, Romanian, it's a remarkable a collection of languages. While you're studying Latin, you're actually doing preliminary study in all of those languages. And some 50% of all of the words we speak in English come from Latin. Uh, so we're going to learn so much from Latin. We're not, we're not only going to learn more English vocabulary. We're not only, only going to do some, some advanced study in um, preliminary study in French and Spanish and Italian and, and Portuguese say, but we're also going to learn how to do some puzzle solving. We're going to learn how to see how the parts fit together to form a whole. And that's kind of what the study of grammar is. Grammar. This word grammar, it comes from a, a, a Greek word first, grama. The word grama in Greek just means letter, like A, B, C, or D. In Greek, that would be alpha, beta, or gamma, and delta. But at any rate, the Romans took the, this word right into Latin, so it means letter. Gramma means letter. If we put an 
or at the end, we get the word grammar. The study of grammar is the study of how letters come together to form words, and then how words come together to form sentences, and sentences form all kinds of language, stories, books, novels, poems, speeches, etc. The study of grammar is the study of how language works, the structure of language. So to study Latin grammar is not just to study Latin grammar, it's also to study the grammar of all other languages. And it's such a regular and orderly language. The grammar is orderly, you know, fairly predictable and regular, that it is a great way to study not only Latin grammar, but English grammar. In fact, you will find yourself learning English grammar without even realizing that you are by studying Latin grammar. This is just another one of the great reasons to study Latin. It's also just a rich language that has such a, a long and storied history. We're going to learn something about Roman history and how it so much influenced uh, all of Western civilization and therefore our own lives. We're going to learn that as we study Latin. But we're going to start this chapter because we can't learn everything at once. We're going to start this chapter by focusing on the Latin verb. Now, what is a verb? Well, a verb is a part of speech. It's a kind of word that has a particular role to play in language, and that role is to show action and also a state of being. But let's talk about action first. Verbs are words that show action. Can you think of a word that might be a verb that shows action in English? Think of some kind of activity that you enjoy doing. Do you like running? Some of you run around, some of you can run fast and long. Well, running is an action, so to run must be a verb. And, of course, it is a verb. Can you think of some other activities that you like that have action? Activities have action. Well, some of you like to paint and draw. You're very good at drawing. Drawing is an action, so to draw must be a verb. I'm speaking right now to you, and I'm looking at you as well. Those are actions, so to look and to speak are verbs. So how about if I was sawing on a log? Well, that's a verb. Might be some hard work, but it's a verb. So to saw or to cut would be a verb. Well, that's what verbs do, they show action. They can also, however, show a state of being. For example, the word is. He is, after sawing that log, he is sweaty, he is weary, he is tired. That word is is a verb, we call it a being verb. It tells us his state of being. If it was Marcus, Marcus cutting, he is tired. And if it were you, I would say you are tired. And that verb are is a being verb. So that's a verb that shows a state of being. I am tired. You are tired. Marcus, he is tired. Okay, we'll focus mainly right now on verbs that show action rather than a state of being. That will be our study for a few chapters. Well, that's one part of speech, a verb. Another part of speech is a noun. A noun names a person, a place, or a thing. So, can you think of anything around you right now as you look around the room that you're in that is a thing? Well, that would be a noun. You might see a chair. Well, a chair is a thing, so a chair is a noun. There's a light, a wall, a door. Those are all things, so those are nouns. But nouns can also name persons. Are there any other people in the room? Maybe a sister, a brother, a parent? Well then, let's say your brother's name is Mark. Mark is a person, so Mark must be a noun. And he is. And if he doesn't know it, why don't you just inform him of this fact now and say, Mark, you are a noun. Well, persons are nouns, but so are places. So right now you are in some place. I happen to be in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a place. Marcus, who we saw sawing on that log, well, he's got to be doing that in some place. Maybe it's in Rome, the city of Rome. That's a place. 
Maybe it's in a forest. Maybe it's on a road. Maybe he's sawing a log inside his house. Well, that's a place. So nouns name a person, place, or thing. Pronouns, the another part of speech, pronouns are in the service of nouns. They, they help nouns. This word pro can mean on behalf of. So they do a service on behalf of nouns. What do they do? Well, they kind of substitute for the noun. So I could say Marcus is sawing, or I could substitute a little pronoun, which is the little word he, and instead of saying Marcus is sawing, I could say he is sawing. So here are some of the pronouns. I, you, he, she, it. If Julia was sawing, I would say she is sawing. She would be a pronoun. And speaking of myself, I could say I am sawing. That would be a pronoun. Or if there were several of us together, Marcus, Julia, and I all working together sawing that log, it would be we. Or if there were two of you, it would be you two. Marcus and Julia, you are, you are sawing. Or if I was talking about some people who were farther away, John and David, they over there, they are sawing. That's a little pronoun too that takes the place of saying John or David. That's a, those are those are pronouns. So we've learned we've learned a lot already in just a few moments about grammar. We've learned three different kinds of words. We've learned about verbs that show action, nouns that name a person, place, or a thing and pronouns that can take the place of nouns. Well, that's going to be helpful for what we're going to do next, which is to study the Latin verb. Then the Latin verb that we are going to look at is this wonderful word, love, to love, I love. In Latin, this is amo. Amo means I love. If I wanted to say I love Latin, I would say amo latinum. If I wanted to say, I love Rome, I would say, amo romam. But amo means, I love. So, amo means, I love. It's the first form that we see here, I love. But we have a chart here that shows a number of different ways that we can talk about love. We call this chart, for your information, a conjugation. And a conjugation simply means that we are bringing together the, the endings of, of verbs to their stems. I'm going to talk about this more next week, but I'm going to show you ahead of time how this works. Here is the stem of the Latin verb for loving. It's ama. And you can see it everywhere, can you not? I'll just... I'll just uh, Put it in a little box each place. Ama. 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 Over here, we only have am. And it's because the A has gotten sucked in and absorbed into the O. But otherwise, it's kind of there. So what is left are these endings. O, S, T, Mus, Tis, Unt. These are verb endings. This is the verb stem. So if we take the stem, which is ama, and we add an ending like t, we get amat. Huh. That's what we mean when we say we're conjugating. We're adding these two things together. Conjugate is actually comes from a Latin word, which means to join together or to marry. We are joining together the stem with the ending. You see, Latin is a language that has many endings. It has few words, a lot fewer words than English. English has about a half a million or more words. But all of the verbs in Latin have their own endings. And at first you think, well, that's kind of confusing. But it's really quite simple. It's easy to learn these endings. And then we just put them onto the stem to form the kind of verb that we want. And let me show you how that works. So if I put an O to this stem, to ama or am, it means I love. If I add an S to the stem, I have now amas, it means you love. 
If I add a T to the stem, it means he, she, or it loves. Pretty simple. If I add a mus, it means, can you guess what this might mean? If I add a mus to ama, it means we love. And if I add a tis to ama, it means you all love. When there are two or more of you, you love. And if I add an nt to the stem ama, it means they love. Isn't that interesting? Now, remember we talked about pronouns? I, you, he, she, it, we, you, all, they. Did you see any of these pronouns being used when I translated the Latin to the English? Here the pronouns are. I, you, he, she, it, we, you, all, and they. The pronouns are a, are a part of these verb forms. In other words, if I want to say that he loves, this is I'm talking about Marcus, and I say, Marcus, he loves a lot. Marcus loves, he loves. All I would have to say is ama. And this T here is telling me that it, it is a he. It could possibly be a she. And if I was talking about an animal, say, it could even be an it. But I know that we're talking about Marcus, so when I say Amat, you know that I mean he loves. So the pronouns get tucked in to the verb form itself. That's what the endings do. Isn't that remarkable? So the I is kind of tucked into this O. Amo, I love. The U is kind of tucked into the S at the end. That's our sign that it means you. Amas means you love. If I said amas, I'm saying you love. If I say amamos, I'm saying we love. Well, to learn these verbs well, we want to chant them and sing them too. So we're going to sing them. Amo, amo, am, or chant them. Amo, amas, amat. Amamos, amatis, amant. And you want to do this fast, you want to do it slow, you want to do it quiet, you want to do it loud. Chant it until it just becomes a part of you. You will Next week we'll be focusing on just learning these endings. O, S, T. Mus, tis, unt. And turn that into a chant until it just comes right out of you every time you wake up in the morning. Good morning, Mom. O, S, T. Mus, tis, unt. Good morning. That's how well you will learn these endings. One other thing to notice, did you see the S that is in, in that that is over this box and the P that is over this box? Well, the S here stands for singular. Why? Because in each of the cases here, the form for the verb to love involves just a single person. Amo, I love, that's just one single person, me. Amas, you love. Well, you're just one person too. That's a single. You're just a single person, so that's singular. You love. Amat, he, she, or it loves. Well, if he loves or she loves, they're just one person. He loves is one person. P over here stands for plural. Plural means two or more. You might even say it could mean many. But when I say we love, I'm not just talking about a single person now. I'm talking about at least two or more people. We love. There has to be someone else with me. And when I say amatis, I mean you all love. I'm meaning two of you or more. This is the plural form of you. So that's plural. And when I say they love, amat, they love, of course I'm talking about more than one person. They means two or more. So this, this particular column here, this, this section, this block is singular. And this block is plural. Verbs can be either singular or plural. Did you know that? Even in English, this is the case. If I say, they walk, that's plural. There's more than, more than, there's two or more people walking. If I say, he walks, it's singular because only one person is walking. So, 
Now you've just learned that verbs can be singular or plural. That's true in Latin. It's also true in English. Our singular verb endings are O-S-T. Our plural verb endings are mustis unt. That's not too difficult. Altogether they are O-S-T, mustis unt. These verbs, these verb endings, and this verb, this whole verb conjugation, takes place in what time? When I say amo, I love, is that taking place yesterday? No, that would be I loved. If I'm talking about having loved yesterday, I would say I loved in English, right? So I love can't be in the past. So when is it taking place? Is it in the future? No, when I say I love, it's happening now. If I want to talk about loving in the future, I would say I will love. So this particular verb is taking place in the present. I love, like I love now. So we call this a present tense verb. And when we say tense, that word tense doesn't mean that you're all uptight, like before a race. It means, in this case, having to do with time. Tense is time. When does the action of the verb take place? This verb, the action, the action of this verb, takes place in the present. Amo, I love. Amas, you love. So let's just review the entire verb one more time. I'll chant through it and listen to the way I pronounce it. Amo, amas, amat. Amamus, amatis, amat. Amo, amas, amat. Amamus, amatis, amat. I have just conjugated the verb in Latin for to love. I've listed it with all of its forms in the present tense. I've given you the singular forms, amo, amas, ama, and the plural forms, amamus, amatis, amat. That's called conjugating a verb. You're learning all kinds of grammar, and we're just in chapter one. Well, I only have a couple more things to teach you, and that's to show you this, uh, this, these four words: amo, amare, amawi, amatum. What what is going on with, with with what, what what are these? Well, these are called the four principal parts of a verb. Whenever you look up a Latin verb in a dictionary, it will be listed this way. You won't just see one form of a verb. You will see these four different forms, these four different parts. They are called principal parts because they are important. By principal, we mean these are important to know. There could be other parts that we could have listed, but these are important parts. Well, think about this in English. If you were to look up the word love in an English dictionary, you would probably just see love, and then it would define it. That's how we do it in English. But we could have given additional parts. We could, we could say, let's just pretend we're writing our own English dictionary, and we want to show verbs with more parts than is usual. So we could say love, but let's say comma. How about to love? Because that's another way that we talk about love. Well, what if we wanted to show how the, the, way, the part of love when it has when it when it takes place in the future. Oh, well, we might say, oh, will love. And what if we wanted to describe the way love can even be functioning as a kind of adjective, loving. And so on. We could we could start listing a number of different forms for love in an English dictionary, but when we see the word love, we know these 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 other parts kind of come with it. And we want to save some space in the dictionary, so we don't want to show all of these different forms. Well, in a Latin dictionary, these four forms will always be listed because they're important principal parts. And by learning these parts, it will help you to understand a lot of other things in Latin down the road. So we will learn amo, I love. That's the first principal part. Then we will learn amare, which is what we call the infinitive, and it means to love. And then we will learn amawi or amavi, if we're using the ecclesiastical pronunciation, and this means 
I loved in the past. And then we will learn amatum, loved. Well, this is the first principal part, the second principal part, the third, and the fourth. Now, here's the good news. You don't have to know exactly how these are going to be used down the road, but you want to learn them now so it will save you a lot of time down the road. But I can tell you at least this. Uh, we will be using these first two principal parts a lot in this book, and you will see very quickly why it is so useful to memorize these two really well from the beginning. And then in future, your future studies, having learned these will come in very handy. So, amo, amare, amawi, amatum, I love to love, I loved, loved. That's how you want to chant them over and over again so that you learn not just these four parts in Latin, but you'll know their English translations as well. Okay, there's just one other thing I'd like to leave you with as we finish up chapter one, and that's to look at our vocabulary for this week. The letters that are in, the, the words rather, that are in white here, what part of speech are they? Amo, do, intro, laboro, and naro. Are they verbs, nouns, or pronouns? Do they show action? Or do they name a person, place, or a thing? Well, I think you see, by having looked at their definitions, that they all show action. Amo, I love. Do, I give. Intro, I enter. Laboro, I work. Naro, I tell. These are all verbs. How about the, the words that are here in this orange-like color? Are these verbs, nouns, or pronouns? Do they show action, or do they name a person, place, or thing? If you said that they are nouns because they name a person, place, or thing, you would be correct. Aqua, well, that's that a person, a place, or a thing. It's a thing. Water is a thing. Aqua means water. Fabula, story, that's a thing. Porta, a gate. Well, that's a thing. Silva or Silva, that is, that's a forest. That's a person, place, or thing. It's a thing. It could maybe even be a place, the forest. And terra, earth, it also is a place or a thing. So these are all nouns. And these are all verbs. Now, you've probably seen already by looking through the book that there are a lot of English words that come to us from Latin. We call these words derivatives. And I'll just spell that for you. D riv a tiv. And you'll see in your book that it comes from two Latin words, de plus rivus or rivus. And it means down from the river down from the stream. <clears throat> so imagine Latin is like this river of words coming down to us. And as those Latin words come floating down to us to where we are, they change a little bit and they come into our English language. Those are called derivatives. Words that are derived or come from Latin. And as I said already, about 50% of the words that you speak and read come from Latin even though they may have changed a little bit. Let's look at some examples. From the word aqua, that means water, we get the word aquatic. An aquatic animal, like a dolphin, lives in the water. Aquatic is a English derivative that comes from Latin. From fabula, which means story, we get the word fabulous. If something is fabulous, it's almost as if you're living in an exciting story. So fabulous comes from fabula. It is a derivative of fabula. From porta, we get a word like portal, to walk through a big portal. Big opening in a castle, the portal of the castle. Well, it comes from porta, which means gate. And from silva, or silva, if I pronounce that V as a va, I'm using the ecclesiastic pronunciation, silva, 
Silver Beach Forest, well, I live in a state called Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. It means Penn's Woods because William Penn, a long time ago, was given a charter to start a colony in the land in which I live, Pennsylvania. And there are a lot of woods, a lot of forests in our state of Pennsylvania. So Pennsylvania means Penn's Woods. It is a derivative from Silva. And how about from Terra? I like to roll my R's. Terra. Terra means Earth. Well, if someone visited our Earth from outside the Earth, we might call them an extraterrestrial. If it was some a Martian from Mars, say, extraterrestrial means outside of the Earth. Well, extraterrestrial comes from Terra. It is a derivative of Terra. Isn't that exciting? There, you are going to be learning all kinds of new English. You thought you were studying Latin. It turns out that by studying Latin, you are studying a lot of English. You're learning English grammar right along with your Latin grammar. You are learning all kinds of English vocabulary words. This is like a big vocabulary building course. And you're already doing some preliminary study in Spanish and French and Italian and Portuguese and Romanian because all of those languages come from Latin. In fact, about 90% of the words in, say, Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese come from Latin. So if you ever want to study any of those languages, you already have started by studying Latin. Isn't that exciting? That's why amo Latinum, I love Latin. Well, that's all for chapter one. I'll see you next week for chapter two when we will continue our study of Latin verbs. See you then.